one God who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. As we gather together, we acknowledge the Diné, the Hopi people, who are the traditional custodians of the Flagstaff area on which we meet. And we, repay, we pay respect to the elders, past and present, of all indigenous people of the Arizona and United States. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another, first beginning with a moment of silence. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess, we confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown. Things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in the midst of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us, even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By the grace we have been saved, in the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen us with the power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in our hearts through faith. Amen.
For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably, as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Jesus' name. 
That's when Jesus promises to be in our midst, not when we're off by ourselves feeling all holy and such. Jesus lets us know that like it or not, we need each other. Not just for practical reasons of like getting to doctor's appointments, getting groceries, or having someone cheer you on when you're off walking a race. But for spiritual reasons as well. We need each other because two heads are better than one. Because we can accomplish more together than apart. We need each other to remind ourselves that we belong to, not just the congregation, but we belong to a family of faith. Now, when families work together, they are God's way of teaching us important things like how to share, <laughs> how to speak to others, how to care deeply for one another. And we learn these important lessons like we can't have everything, we learn to compromise, giving some things that we want to other people. And if we're honest, if we're honest, we know that that's never easy. But this is part of being fully human, created in the image of God. There is something else we learn in families, how to fight. <laughs> And now this is especially true if you have a brother or sister or multiples thereof. So from the get-go, my sister and I could fight over the stupidest things, which at times, at the time, seemed to me like major things. Like, I got so mad at my sister one time, we shared a room, and we had bunk beds. And she crawled into my bed. She had the nerve to crawl into my bed. <laughs> So I made my point known by pulling her out by the finger and dislocating, oh, dislocating oh. the joint. <laughs> but the other things we learn, more importantly, is how quickly to forget our differences and forgive each other for those mean things that we have done to each other. But not everyone has those memories from growing up. Maybe you didn't have brothers or sisters. Maybe your family just didn't work right. Maybe your family was a place where rules were more important than people. And the first rule was silence. Especially if you're going to say anything uncomfortable or unpleasant. What is it? Um, some of mothers say. Children are seen without her. Yes, or if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. So if we're going to say something, the family rule was keep it nice or keep it to yourself because harmony, or even the illusion of harmony <laughs> and peace, was far more important than telling the truth. In today's lesson from the Gospel of Matthew, we learned that this should not be so with our Christian family. In the household of God, when someone sins against you, you must go and talk. Not shout, not berate, but talk to and listen to them. And if that doesn't work, you must keep going back, eventually with others, doing everything in your power to reconcile with your brother or sister. <coughs> now the really odd thing about Jesus' counsel here is that Jesus seems to put the burden on the victim. And that Jesus seems less concerned about, he's far less concerned about who is right and who is wrong than he is about getting the family reconciled again. The important thing is that we are to listen to each other. And if something wrong is wrong, we shouldn't pretend that nothing is wrong, because the only thing worse than a brother losing a brother or sister is pretending that you haven't you haven't acknowledged and you're letting that fester and it becomes an unintended wound. Now all this is hard advice, 
do as I say and not as I do necessarily. <laughs> it's hard advice and all kinds of excuses, all kinds of excuses can rush to our lips to avoid doing what Jesus says. Who am I to judge? What is it to me? Me? Go to him? She is a sinner. Sinner, let her come to me. <coughs> Tell her my feelings are hurt. What if she hurts me again? I don't know what to say. I would feel so foolish. And what good would this do anyway? Things are never going to change. Well, beloved people of God, all these things are fine excuses if you don't mind living in what C.S. Lewis referenced, the outskirts of hell, from his book, The Great Divorce. But those of us who are called to be Jesus' family, we are called to be his family in the 21st century. These excuses will simply not do anymore. For there is something more important than being right or wrong. And that something is keeping the family together. The real challenge in the modern world is the speed with which most people today are ready to forsake their relationship. They're ready to forsake it in favor of nursing their hurt feelings and wounded pride. So in the language of another generation, the problem is how eager we are to repay sin with more sin. There is another way. Jesus says we can go to them and we can actually talk to those we are in conflict with, conflict with rather than change, changing to another channel. <laughs> Telling them what we think, only that we think might be wrong, but be ready to listen. Be ready to share. Because the best way to end a fight is to admit that we too might be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> there are certain questions that we need to ask, like, am I sure I know what I'm talking about? Have I given the other person the benefit of the doubt? What are my motives in confronting them with my feelings? <clears throat> do I want to make them feel really bad? Or do I want to make peace? What am I afraid of? Is the relationship worth the risk? The only reason to follow Jesus' advice at all is to restore the relationship that is in danger of being lost. Once you've decided that's what you want, it helps to remember that you are working for the relationship, not against it. That your goal is for reconciliation, not retribution. And that being right is less important than the right relationship. <laughs> now one could argue that it is a really a pain in the neck to belong to a family. <laughs> Especially a family of faith. But according to Jesus, our life together is the chief means that God has chosen for being with us. It is the ultimate importance to God. Our life together is the place where we are comforted. Our life together is the place where we are confronted, tested, and redeemed by God through one another. This family of faith that we have been called to is how we know God and how God knows us. That is what we are called to do. We are called to forgive and to seek forgiveness, to heal and to be healed. If that is the case, then we ought to throw 
one big block party <laughs> and fill the, mu fill the place with music and laughter, merriment and mutual affection, so that people from their far-flung and distant outposts can see what the fuss is all about, what the light and what the joy is all about. Thanks be to God for calling us to a family of faith. Amen. 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 of God, we pray for the church, the creation, and the needs of our neighbor. Hold us accountable, O oh God. Show your church where repentance is needed, and lead us in paths of intentional compassion and listening. Help us extend hands of reconciliation and care, especially in relationships with other Christians and peoples of other faiths. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Reveal your miracles to us, O God. Move us to cherish you as we behold the wonders of creation. Renew the seas and the soil, the forest and the creatures that live in them. Turn us to ways of living that seek earth's thriving. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Inspire us to lead with honor, O God. Guide judges and legislators, police, 
and government officials to create and uphold just laws. Move us to treat all people with dignity and guide our conversations with one another. Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. Help us comfort those who suffer, O God. Reassure any who are harmed by the wicked acts of others. Bring peace to all who are vulnerable, <coughs> frightened, despairing, or sick, especially Rich, Nick, Dolly, Minnie, Molina, Mariah, Joe and family, Bridget and family, Sheila, Cynthia, Michael, Jess, Jeff, William, Donna, Cheryl, Kyle, Pamela, Missy, John, Julie, Caden, Jean, Jane, Paula, Aurora, Brenda, David, Alexandra, Elizabeth, Jacob. Guard their waking and their sleeping. Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. Awaken us, O God. Challenge and encourage your people to value the vocation to which each is called. We pray for all discerning new possibilities or changing employment. In all our neighbor's callings, teach us to love our neighbor above all else. Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. We pray for Lutheran Campus Ministry, our monthly basket recipient. May those they serve be touched by your grace through our, our offerings. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Gracious God, hear the intercessions that are offered by those gathered here. For the people of Morocco. The hungry. We celebrate and give thanks for the gift of love that you have given to both to Rick and Lori as they celebrate their anniversary. Be our hope, O God. Remember with thanksgiving your disciples who die in faith. May their trust in your promise be our protection and our hope. Merciful God, our Remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and the prayers of our heart, trusting in your compassion, which has been made known to us through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Please share that peace with one another.
us free. God of the field and forest, God I see, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation, and multiply your graciousness in us, that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels and with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> Thank you. 
Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshments we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you. <laughs> may the Lord make his face to shine upon you. And may the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thanks, Jesus.